art can benefit all people and, and uh, it's not a matter of being an art scholar to understand it. You can still feel it and enjoy it. After painting for 15 years, uh, I felt like you know, a lot of artwork was closed up in galleries and, and it sort of had this invisible wall between the uh, people who really benefit from it and the people who showed it. Joe Mangrum has been creating temporary works from found objects in public places since the mid-90s. A lot of my work is simply spontaneously um, assembled out of the materials that are readily available to me. So in the case of a lot of the flower sculptures I did, um, it's just basically saying, well, I have this many orchids and I have this many daisies and, and peeling them apart and trying to deconstruct them and, and, and giving each little petal a piece of life. It's touched people. I've had, you know, people just burst into tears walking down the street and, and surprise them out of their um, everyday, you know, commute. The opposite is true is when um, police or someone in a, in a mindset of this black and white reality happens and, and he has to make a judgment call and he's simply doing his job, but the job is, is not given the gray area of, of, uh, of going with what's, what's real in a sense. It's, it's either right or it's wrong. <laughs> I think it's against our natural beings to be put into a box. And so a lot of my work deals with this interaction between a natural flowing organic shape and, and this locked in grid structure and how um, things get commodified in that process. With his mandala-like designs, Joe seeks to change the way people think about our society. Eventually, Joe began moving his work inside and integrating materials that were man-made. His first major solo show was at San Francisco State in 1995. It consisted of five different mandalas, four of which were kind of bunched together, one having natural material opposite money, and then two between those with uh, computer technology and industry. There was a fifth mandala over in the corner, which was very amorphic, and and contained all the elements. It had you know, flowers and technology and industry all mixed together in, in this sort of amoebic form. And uh, it was sort of a suggestion that all these things could coexist without money. Finding indoor space for his large works is often difficult. In 2005, Joe decided to make a piece for World Environment Day, so he approached Reading Studios on Market Street. This led to the creation of Detonation Earth. I immediately got the idea of this exploding mushroom cloud of, of live grass. And so it was about uh, transforming the idea of, of the mushroom cloud into some type of the Earth being victorious over industry and, and the things that destroy it naturally. In 2003, Joe attended the Florence Biennale where he received the prestigious Lorenzo de' Medici Award for a piece about war, oil, and blood called Fragile. Joe's success in Florence led him to Brooklyn, New York this past winter and the Chi Center for Contemporary Art. The thing about the gallery was that it was working in a fishbowl. There's this glass frontage and, and so people would constantly come up in the middle of the night because I'd be there at three, four, or five in the morning and someone would stop and I'd, I'd you know, look up and all of a sudden there's five people in front of the window watching me. Many, many people from this neighborhood come from a Caribbean background, so they were instantly connected to the idea of the sand paintings um, and seeing some of their native foods used in a much more artistic way than they're used to seeing. At one point, a, a guy came in, and he looked at the painting on the wall, and he said, is that the, the toxins leaching out of New York City? Because there was a skyline and sort of a reflection of the skyline painted on the wall. 
and got to talking with him, and it, as it turned out, he was a, a, a former New York City policeman and rescue worker at 9-11. And so he was going through treatment for leaching the toxins out of his body from the experience of the, being a rescue worker. And so he was projecting his own experience on it, but it, in a metaphorical way, it was, it was about the toxins of New York City. Joe returned to Red Ink Studios on Market Street this past May to create another large floor piece. How you doing? <laughs> the plan was to work right at street level in the storefront windows for all to see. Basically, what I'm thinking is just something that interacts with the window and pours through it. Maybe. I don't think he always comes in with a complete idea of what he's doing. Uh, it kind of you know morphs as he as he works the materials and and as it takes shape. So I'm um, never quite clear where it's going, but it's always an adventure. But he, he usually takes, you know, a week or two to process and then uh, comes in and starts assembling and, you know, takes something away and adds something to it. And uh, it's wonderful to watch it grow and he will be in the window. So perhaps the community can share in that process this time. Well, I kind of, divided the space down the center with, with uh, natural materials being on one side and, and man-made materials being on the other. And, and the title of the piece is Birth and Death. There's a certain wow factor in, in the work that it, it's, it, it's such a labor-intensive process and a meditation that I'm like placing all these objects piece by piece over time and uh, the intensity builds with, with the interaction of people and, and you see it like over time how people react and, the, and they're like excited about the work just walking by in this sort of fishbowl arena. So in the birth side there's all these uh, sort of life elements of, of seeds and, and sprouts and, and things that are about to sprout. So it's about birth and, and, and generation of life. And, and in the opposite side of death there's, there's bullets and things that are dis destructive uh, to the life source. I think death is brought out by also this idea of false wealth, which is a recurring theme in my work where there's bricks covered with gold leaf. So creating these things that cause things to die or something in us to die. That's what I'd like people to examine. There's uh, fava beans, star anise, uh, lentils, black beans, red beans. So on this side we have uh, microchips and computer controlled modules and the T is actually uh, cross sections of, of tailpipe. For me it's just expressing an idea that, that people can walk into a space and walk away with something to say that's, that's changed their mind about where they're living, how they're living, um, that it's, it starts a dialogue in their head and among their friends that um, they've been affected in some way, by, visually, by my work. It's really about people thinking deeply.